Hey, welcome to this episode of The Square. As you've heard me say over the last several weeks, one of the reasons I was really excited to get back into the office is because it meant we could start integrating more hosts, which was always part of the plan for The Square. This is a, a podcast about human-centric design and how design affects the humans that inhabit them. It's not about any one person. So let me introduce you to Gabriel. Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel Oros. I'm an architect with the aviation team and I have been one for about eight and a half years. I've lived my life interested in the way that people move through spaces and looking at the large scale infrastructure. And so being a part of the aviation industry and getting to design airports and how people move through airports has been th wonderfully thrilling. And now getting the opportunity to take what we've learned and push it out to a digital platform for people to learn from, yeah. I'm thrilled to be a part of it. Awesome, we're glad to have you. Let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of The Square. I am delighted to be joined here with Justin Dauhauer. Today we're gonna to be focusing in on the American Airlines Credit Union building on the American Airlines campus. But before we begin, before we get rolling on that, I want you to tell me about a little bit about yourself, what got you into being an architect, how you got into this profession. Yeah, uh, I've always been interested in architecture since I can remember. I had the proverbial Lego set, and a rector said when I was young, and I'm sure that's a very familiar story with a lot of us are in architecture. I think the earliest memory was, I, I think it was sixth grade, and my art teacher was very supportive of all the drawings I was doing. I, I was doing a lot of drawings of buildings for some reason, and doing a lot of sculpture, and, and she told me, you know, architecture might be something you, you should look into. And of course, at that time, I didn't really know what architecture was about or what it really meant. I just knew it was, there's some, something involved with drawing and buildings. So uh, later on, it, it just kind of stuck in my mind, and that's just what I wanted to do since. So. That's awesome. Yeah. I know you and I, have, we've actually worked on a couple of small projects, including a competition, yeah. which we won, <laughs> uh, unless you fact check, in which case we didn't win. <laughs> but we worked together, and it was like you had a passion towards sustainability. Can you talk about your interest in that? What got you motivated in that? Yeah, I think sustainability has always been you know, prime in my mind, and, and because I, I care about our environment, I care about the impact that we have as human beings and just our overall ability to really care and have stewardship over the resources that we have at our disposal. So that's always been an interest to me and, and how we apply it to the built environment and landscape and, and everything that we have a touch on uh, is just been really important to me. And you've championed a lot of the efforts that Corrigan has put forward towards working with sustainability. Is that correct? I would say so. Yeah, I've been, I've been a nuisance <laughs> in that respect. Good. Absolutely. And that's what we need. We need more of those. <laughs> with the American Airlines Credit Union building, why don't you give us some broad understanding of what the project really was? Yeah. So I was the project architect on it, and it's their new headquarters on the American Airlines campus, 153,000 square feet of office space, and five floors above grade and a half level below grade. And it, it's mainly focused on their call center personnel, but it also has a branch uh, for their members. Anybody who works for American Airlines can have um, their financial banking through the credit union. Okay. So. When we're beginning this project, as you started looking at everything, what was that process and the mindset going into this project, walking into it for the first time? I think the mindset was this is a pretty important project because we did the original headquarters for the credit union about a decade ago. So this was really coming full circle. Actually, the aviation team had worked on that. So it was important that we were getting another chance to do their headquarters again. But then there was also a focus on sustainability. We knew that you know the credit union was, was passionate about that. And of course, I personally have a passion about it as well. So we felt like there, there was that strong alignment already so that already those relationships were in place and we had a lot of things kind of lining up. That's great. You said there was a 10 year, the 10 year prior we had done another one. Why in the terms of architecture was it such a fast turnaround to want to get rolling into a new credit union? Yeah, it was kind of funny because you know, the building's not really that old and it's still functional, but as part of the American Airlines campus redevelopment, they wanted to bring all their services and functions back okay. kind of under one umbrella, so to speak. So as part of their campus master plan redevelopment, they're bringing you know, a hotel, they're bringing their headquarters, they're bringing the credit union you know, all kind of back into this one centralized area. So that, that was the reason for doing a new facility for them. Okay. So tell us about the start of the project, how you started to come up with the design, the layout, and all, all of the 
visioning elements that were really aligning what you believed, what they believe and they wanted into this project? Yeah, so we really started out with several visioning sessions, or you can call them shreds or, or presentations with the, with the client. And these were opportunities to present our ideas, but also to ask questions from them and try and get input from them and the stakeholders. And we had one for branding, we had one for programming, there was one for just design, form of the building. And there was specifically one for sustainability as well, because it was hard to you know, do all these at once. So we had to kind of break them up into segments. Uh, but that sustainability was a big focus that we that we wanted to get input on and find out what, what are they passionate about. So we created these, I guess you could call them guiding principles for different elements. And they had about five that we narrowed down that were priorities for them from a sustainability standpoint. That's great. Were there any things that surprised you that came out of those visioning sessions that they were not expecting and they want to be a part of? Yeah, I was actually surprised that they had several champions on their on their team that really were passionate and cared about different aspects. Uh, there was somebody that really cared about landscaping and plant the different types of plants that were going to be used on the campus and around the building. Uh, somebody really cared about renewable energy and, and solar solar energy. Uh, other people cared about water reuse. So it, it was nice to, to work with a client who had people that really cared about these things. and. We're like, yes, we can help you with that. Do you feel like a lot of those things that you guys talked about were brought all the way through to the final fruition of the, the end product? I'd say most of the major things. I mean, we, we definitely had higher goals. You know, we, we tried to do a lot more than we ultimately were able to, but you kind of, you shoot high and you, you, try, and, you try and land where you can. W was there any part of it that was a specific element that the client really focused in on that they love and they really wanted to see come out of that and see all the way through that would have continued all the way through the final product? Uh, I'd say the landscaping was something that, that really carried through. Um, there, there was a lot of focus on how people would move through the site and into the building outside the building. They, they really care about these people spaces that where people can congregate and socialize but there's also a focus on security, so we had to really balance those two things together. But I think there was, there was a nice balance of outdoor space, indoor space, you know, flex space, and how people kind of transition through those and experience them. With the conversation of having people involved and the human-centric, everything that, we, that I know at Corrigan, we're starting to really focus in on the human-centric design. Was that something that the client brought to the table, or was that something that we as Corrigan brought to the table as far as having those discussions and the human focus? I think it came from both sides. I, I think they, they really care about their employees and their members, and they wanted to make sure that their experience visiting the new credit union was going to be enjoyable, and then there was a, uh, a film familiarity and a trust that would be continued from the current building. And then also from our standpoint, you know, we, we always care about the people relationships and how people experience the built environment. So it was really coming out from two different directions, but same goal. This project has a wonderful, unique look and is a look, somewhat stands out from a lot of the other buildings on the campus. I want you to talk about some of the specific features of part of this project that really stood out for you. I think one one of the features that I'm particularly proud of is, is the solar photovoltaics that are up on the roof that were installed and offset about 13% of the building's energy consumption annually. That, that was a hard sell at the beginning because you know immediately there was you know how much is this going to cost and but there, there was an entire process that we went through we partnered with the local installer to do a cost benefit analysis and return on investment and I, I think what really makes it important to me is we asked the question we we actually you know solar energy is great it's renewable it's it's going to help the building long term but there's already a lot of preconceived notions about hey you know, they're probably going to say no, well, should we even bring it up? We don't want them to shoot it down. But you know, I, I was pretty persistent and I really wanted to, to push it, just see how, you know, what the reaction would be and see how, how much they would buy off on it. And, you know, we, we pushed hard enough and they were, they were great with the idea and they loved, they loved the final product of it. So I mean, that's always the successful, when you know you've hit something successful is when they're happy with the final product. Yeah. This project is, we have our Corrigan signature, the whole team works on it, but you, Justin, as an architect who is focused in on sustainable design, what really made this project special for you? I would say the analysis and the design of the building envelope was very important to me and 
something that I spent a lot of time working on. And it wasn't because I was asked to, it was just something that I, I knew required attention and focus and a lot of analysis. So it's an all glass building. And in Texas, that's not really the best thing from an energy standpoint or a comfort standpoint. So I knew shading was going to be really important. And how that shading was going to be accomplished, I felt needed to be thought through and intentional and actually relate back to the theme of the project that was developed early on through the visioning sessions, which was this idea of motion and uh, you know velocity. And it, it related back to the aviation industry and you know, planes and travel. So being able to relate back to that, but yet have something that performed really well, I knew was important. So I've always been interested in doing daylighting analysis and studies and figuring out how we control glare and create really good quality of light inside buildings that is actually enjoyable and, you know, functional. So I did probably hundreds of <laughs> analysis, uh, daylighting studies and analysis different times of day, different times of year, looking at how the sun passes across the, the facade and ended up developing a concept for these shading louvers. And again, they're, you know, it's one of those first things that gets cut from a project because it's, it looks like easy money to, to get rid of, but I knew it was important and I knew that we needed to have it. So I had, I knew I needed to justify their existence. So I did all these studies to show you know, you're going to improve your daylighting, you're going to reduce your glare, you're going to reduce your thermal heat gain on this glass box that you're building. And it's going to actually enhance the beauty of the building. So through through all those exercises, all the all the analysis and data I was able to put together, I was able to convince our team internally first that, hey, this is worth presenting to the, to the client. And the end design was actually these louvers that have a curvature to them. And funny enough, the, the reason for suggesting that curve was because with the same amount of material if you start to curve it on a horizontal application you actually get more shade mm. on the building envelope as opposed to having just a, a straight flat piece coming out it was also more aerodynamic and it just it just worked better and so that it was that happy blend of you know science and art and being able to see how those two things come together but when we presented it you know the owner loved it and of course, they ask questions, you know, why, why do we have all these, you look at all these other glass buildings, they don't have this. But after we showed the, the data and the results, it was pretty clear that this was important. And I think the, the best validation of that was actually walking inside the building and seeing the shade cast by these louvers. And I happened to be walking, I think, in the same time of day, same time of year as one of the analysis I did. I was like, that looks familiar. <laughs> like, that, that angle looks really familiar. I was like, I've been looking at those things for too long. So I actually looked up the analysis I did, and I put it side by side with the picture I took. I was like, wow, that's, like, spot on. It was within a few inches of where I, it was predicted to land for that, that shadow line, which is, I know it's really geeky and technical, but <laughs> it was just one of those great validation things to say, yes, we actually got something right. And people start to believe in it. It's like, all right, now we can take this forward to the next projects we do. Have we begun the process of rolling some of the analysis and studies or, or methods of methodology of how you've been approaching these studies into new projects? Absolutely. Yeah. People, once they see how it works and that it's, it's beneficial, I think everybody gets on board and it starts to get implemented on more projects that we do. So that's great. You mentioned there was a time frame from the last credit union to this credit union as a 10 year space. What's the ideal timeline of that this one or the longevity of this project will ideally last yeah and i guess in terms of the building design i mean that building's still functional and and still being used for another tenant right now but this this building was really designed to be a 50-year building so it's pretty long life lifespan we're hoping that they're going to stay in this one longer than they did in the last building but that was more out of necessity of bringing all the functions together on the american airlines campus so yeah there, there was definitely intention uh, paid to the durability of the materials and the structure and even the the flexibility of the spaces so our interiors team that we worked with pretty closely uh, really implemented a lot of flexibility in the space through demountable partitions that could be moved around and create new office spaces and conference rooms uh, there's raised access floor where you can have a lot of flexibility with cabling and wiring so we we thought about all these things ahead of time and we made sure that they were aware that hey you can change your space as your needs grow and develop when you were having the sustainability conversations, how early did you integrate the interior design team and begin to intermingle those disciplines together to make a 
better product. From the very beginning. And I think that's, that's really the way every project should be done. And it's great when we're able to work seamlessly together and not have any bifurcation between interiors and, and core shell or any of the other aspects of the building. I mean, branding, interiors, core shell structure, all that, and landscape, it was all done seamlessly and, and simultaneously, which was great. And it was nice to see all that happen because they all relate to one another. You really can't separate those things apart and still have a cohesive right. design. So. Tell me about if there's anything, knowing what you know, having gone through the process that you would have done differently or would change the, about this process and project? You know, I, I think just being willing to ask more questions and push more ideas forward and be willing to be vulnerable. Uh, the American Airlines Credit Union client was great to work with. I mean, they were very open to ideas, but not all clients are like that. So sometimes we have to be willing to put ourselves out there and maybe get shot down, but it's still good to push these ideas forward. And fortunately, the credit union was, was great and we really enjoyed working with them. That's wonderful. So. Well, Justin, thank you so much for coming out here, for driving all the way down. I know we're still in lockdown, so driving down, for me, it was the first time wearing pants in three months, and they still fit. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for joining us here on our Square episode today. If you're just listening to the audio version, go ahead and check out the video version to see some amazing renderings and videos of this project. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.